Okay, are we recording? Yes, we are. So I'm going to skip number one. I'll talk about it tomorrow, sorry, Monday. But the answer to number one is A. Okay, so not a, I'm going to talk about that. So one is A. And I posted the answers on the class website as well, so you can check that. Okay, but I'll, let me do the other ones. Two, a rectangle is eight feet long. So the easiest way, or one thing you can do is actually draw the rectangle. Eight feet. And the width, this part here, is represented by seven plus x. Seven plus x. Which expression represents the area? Well, how do we find the area of a rectangle? It's base times height, right? So the base is eight. And the height, we put it in parentheses, right? Because it's made of two terms here. Seven plus x. Now, notice that this doesn't look like any of these. But if you do this truly properly, you get a times seven, which is 56. And a times x, which is eight x. And we have an answer. Two is D. Three. Sporting good charges, thirty dollars for twelve cans. So I know that I'm gonna write so money on top, thirty dollars, I can buy twelve cans. And forty-five dollars for two sorry, forty-five dollars for two boxes of golf balls. Two boxes. A coach order 100 cans of tennis balls and five boxes of golf balls. How much would a coach pay for them? Well, well, it's 30 for 12 cans, right? So I think it's easier if you found the unit rate. I mean, we can do, let's see if I put 100. Well, uh, let's see. Divide it by three. I can do that. So if I set up a proportion, I think it will work. So 40, and then what did he buy? 100 cans. So this is cans. So what happens if I buy 100 cans? How much will I pay? So this on top is my question mark. And at the bottom, I buy five boxes. And I want to find the amount of money, right? So look for relationships. Well, this one side to side is times two and a half. So you're very free to use a calculator here since you're at home and hopefully um, not hopefully, but you will definitely get a calculator on day two. So it's a times two and a half relationship at the bottom. And so you're going to go two times, not two times. So it's times 2.5. So on top, it's going to be times 2.5, right? So 45 times 2.5 equals $112. So for five boxes, he'll pay $112.50. And on top, here's a relationship here. Uh, Nothing times 12 is 100, but I can I can um, simplify this. I'm going to divide this by 3, and I get 10. And I divide this by 3, and I'm going to get 4. Now, there is a relationship. So I can ignore this for a second. And 4 to 100 is times 25. And on top here, it's also going to be times 25. So that's going to give me 250. So if I add 250 plus 112, Point fifty cents. I'm going to get three hundred and sixty-two dollars and fifty cents, and that gives us choice C. Okay, so there was a little bit of work to do there. Number four, rectangular prism. So let me draw a rectangular prism. Here's my prism. Okay, let me connect, 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 and connect. It has its eleven and three fifth over here. 9 meters wide, so I'll put the 9 here, and going up and down is 12 and a half. What is the volume? Well, volume is, and again, I know it looks the same, but let's write it like this. So my base is made up of what? 11 and 3 fifths times 9, and my height is 12 and a half. So that's what I'm going to get. So in your calculator, 11 and 3 fifths, I don't have a, what do you call, scientific calculator, so I'm going to use 11.6 times 9, which is going to give me 104.4, and then I'm going to multiply that by 12.5, which is the same thing as 12 and a half, times 12.5, so 104.4 times 12.5, that's going to give me 1,305, and we have our answer over here, 5, 
Gomez found the masses of three rocks. The first rock had a mass of 19, blah, blah, blah. How much greater was the mass of the third rock than the combined mass of the first rock? So we yeah, got first rock, which is 12 point, sorry, 19.28 grams. So I'm going to write 19.28. The second rock is 25.3. And the third rock is 46.3. So they're saying that the third rock here is much heavier than these two combined, and we want to find by how much. So let's add these two. 19.28 plus 25.3 is going to give us 45.58. Sorry. 45 dot goes here, 58. And obviously, that's still a little bit less than the third rock. Let's see by how much. So let's subtract 46.3 minus 44. Make sure you line up your decimals. If you line up your decimals, at all the place values will be lined up under each other correctly. Um, we need to add a zero here, and let's do some borrowing. We, well, let's not borrow from the six becomes five, thirteen becomes twelve, and ten, two, seven, and one. It's heavier by one point seven two grams, and we have an answer right here. Six. Uh, it shows the amount of package, different number of guests. If there are 63 guests at the bread, how much pancake mix? Well, so let's write 63. So what's the relationship here? Times 2. This is a times 2 relationship, and you can tell that it's times 2, right? So from 7 to 63 would be times 9. So the pancakes would be 2 times 9, which is 18. So, sorry times 9 and two, times 9 again. So if 63 guests showed up, I would need 18 cups of mix and 9 cups of milk. Do I have that? Yes, I do. Right here. 7. Each baseball team in the league has 14 players. A total of 56 players signed up today. T represents the number of teams, which statement is true. So, well, there's 56 players, uh, 14 players in a team. So if I divide 56 by 14, I'm going to get 56 divided by 14. I'm going to get 4. I know there are going to be four teams just based on these three numbers, right? Every team is going to be one team, two teams, three teams, four teams, 14 players here. 14 players here, 14 players here, and 14 players here. So let's see which one is true. 56 minus T minus 14 equals T. There are 42 teams in the league. No. Nope. 14 plus 6 equals T. There are 70 teams in the league. No, that's not possible. Since 14 T equals 56, there are four teams in the league. And that seems like it's true one. And four, since 14 equals 56 divided by T, there are eight teams in the league. No. Nope. Well, the relationship here, well, it's a division, right? There's 56 players, and if I say, hey, let's make teams, and I want 14 in each team, I'm going to divide the 56 players by 14, and I know I'm going to get four teams. This is my relationship, and the only one that has that is that. Or 14, 14 times the number of teams that we can make is going to get me 56. If I have 14 players and four teams, does that equal 56? Yes, it does. So the answer is C. The diagram shows blah, 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 what is the surface area. Okay, so surface area, remember, so let me shade this. Start with this. This will be our top. Our top is this 10.5 and this side right here. So I need this measurement and that measurement, right? I know one is 10.5, so this is going to be 6.4. So it's going to be 6.4 times 10.5. And that's going to give me 67.2 uh, centimeters squared. So I know I, the bottom is the same, which is this one right here. This is also 67.2. So let me write it over here. 67.2, 67.2, right? Because the bottom is the same. Let's do this one, uh, the left and the right. Let me focus on this. That's a uh, 6.4 times 4 rectangle, 
that's going to give us 25.6. Guess what? This is also over here going to give us 25.6 because this and this are the same. So I get 25.6 two times. And now we have the front and back, which is a skinny one right here. Okay. Measurement of that, well, from here to here, I know it's 10.5, right? This. And this small one over here <coughs> is a 4. Okay, so 10.5 times 4. I'm going to get 10.5 times 4 equals 42. And I'm going to have 42 twice. 42.0, 42.0. I can add them up. 42 plus 42 plus 25.6 plus 25.6 um, and then 67.2 plus 67.2 it's going to give me 269 is there 269.6 yes there is this one is choice D okay 9 <clears throat> the plant is 20 inches tall. The plant grows 2 H inches each height for the next weeks and H inches for each of the two weeks after that. Which expression shows the height of the plant in inches after six weeks? So a plant is 20 inches tall, 2 inches per week for the next week. 2 H inches. So 2 H inches each week, right? So we're going to multiply this by 4 times 4. And then, excuse me, <coughs> 8 inches, and then we're going to 8 inches in, uh, for each of the 2 weeks, and 8 inches times 2. So first it's going to grow 2H for 4 weeks. So if you multiply 2H and 4, you get 8H. Plus, H times 2 is just, and then let me rewrite this with the coefficient in the front. Okay, and uh, if we we can add these right because they're common uh, what do you call it? Uh, like terms eight h plus two h is ten h, and what is what showed what which expression of the height of the plant in inches after six weeks after six weeks this is going to be times six right, and it's going to be six ten. Hang on a second. After six weeks. And H inches for each of the two weeks after that. Eight inches. Hmm. Hang on a second. Two eight inches for each of the four weeks. So you grew two inches for the first week, two h inches for the second week, two h inches for the third week, two eight inches in the fourth week. And then you grew eight inches for two weeks. So I should get two h, eight h, ten h. Hmm, where did I get into twenty? Which special the plan of the week after six inches? After six weeks? Oh, it's already 20 inches, I forgot. So here I am, this is correct. So um, let me redo it, okay? So a plant, it's 20 inches tall, okay? It's already 20 inches tall. So here's a plant. Uh, I'll make a tree, I think, plant. Okay, here's a plant. The height of this plant is 20 inches. It's already 20 inches. Okay. Now it's going to grow. It's going to grow taller. So for four weeks, it's going to grow, grow two inches in the first week, another two H inches in the second, another two H in the third, and then two H in the fourth. If I add these up, two H plus two H plus two H plus two H means I have eight H. After that, it's going to grow a little bit more. But it's not going to grow 2h, it's going to grow h inches. And then one more week after that, it's going to grow 8 inches as well. h plus h is 2h.
So I can combine these two, 8 inch, 8H plus 2H, and I can get 10H. So, so after six weeks, the plant was already 20 inches, so it's going to be the 20, the height of the plant is going to be the 20 inches that's all, that it already is, plus the 10H if you remember, letter A. Uh, this one we did in class, okay? So I'm going to skip 10. 11. What is the greatest common factor of 10, 14? GCF of 10, 14. So very easy. Without a method. 2. 2 goes into 10 five times. 2 goes into 14 seven times. And for GCF, if you're interested in this number over here, so the greatest common factor is, well, actually, ooh, 10, 14. The greatest common factor of 10, 14 is 5. Wrong. The great, greatest common factor, 10 and 5, is 5. True. Right, if you want to do it, 5 goes into 10 two times, 5 goes to 15 three times, GCF is 5, that's true. Greatest common factor of 13 and 21 is 3, false, because 3 does not go into 13. And greatest common factor of 14 and 21 is 3, also false, because 3 does not go into 14, but it goes in 7. So the only one that's true is B. 12. So let's substitute. Um, 1 half a plus b, so a is 18, b is 14, minus a minus b. So all I do was substitute. So let's do what's inside the parentheses. So it's half a plus 14 is 32, minus 8 minus 14. Let me put that in parentheses. 8 minus 14 is 4. We're going to take that to a second power. Let me take care of the exponents. So half, again, just copy, times 32, minus and 4 to the second power is 4 times 4, which is 16. Now I'm going to multiply these two, right? Half of 32, you can use 0 0.5 if you don't choose. Half of 32 is 16. Now I can subtract with the other 16. And that's going to give me 0. <clears throat> 13. Guess must be at least 42 and a half inches to go to a museum, which in equality represents the height of the guess allowed on the right. So, to go, so we have two numbers, two things we're comparing the height of the people and 42 and a half inches. So, what do they have to be in comparison to 40 and a, 42 and a half? Can they be equal? If you're actually 42 and a half, can you get in this right? Yes, you can, because it says you must be at least. So, if you are. 42 and a half, you can go in. But you also must be greater than that. So if you're taller than 42 and a half, you can go in. If you are 42 and a half, you can also go in. So anything that points this way is wrong. And do we have anything like that? No. That's not right. That's not right because at 42 and a half, you can still go in. That's not right. This one is true. Because you can be 42 and a half or <coughs> greater. Mm, 14. Consider two rules for numerical power. Start with 0, add 4. Start So 0, add 4, keep adding 4, keep adding 4. So that's what we would get. Start with 0, add 12. 24, 36, 48. And that would be what the panel says. So which one describes the relationship between the corresponding terms of the two panels? So which one describes the relationship between like you know numbers that follow zero with the number that follows zero on the second line? Each term of pattern B, so the first number is a four, the second number is a twelve. Each number in pattern B is three times the number in uh, pattern A. Is that true? Is twelve three times bigger than four? Yes. Is twenty-four three times bigger than eight? True. Is thirty-six three times bigger than twelve? Yeah. So this looks like it's correct. Let's check the other one. Each pattern, each pattern in A is three times is four three times bigger than twelve? No, it's not. So this is out. Each term of pattern A is twelve more than the corresponding. Well, is A tw is four twelve more than twelve? No. So that doesn't even make sense. Each term is pattern B is 8 more than 8. Is 12 four, 8 more than 4? Yes. Is 24 8 more than 8? No. Is 36 8 more than 12? No. So that also is not true. So the only one that's true is A. Um, 
Clearing. Fifteen. What is a quotient? Ugh. So let's divide. And because ignore what I said before when I said you could use a calculator, I'd much rather you don't because this is probably going to be day one questions where you don't use a calculator. So forty-seven does not go into four or forty. On forty-five, it goes eight times. Forty-seven times eight. Would that work? I think eight works. Three fifty-six. Well, let's see what my. If I subtract, borrow three ten becomes a nine. It's Fifteen. Fifteen minus six is nine. No, too little. So I did this wrong. So it goes actually nine times. Nine times seven is six three. Carry the six. Nine times four is thirty six. All right. So I did something wrong. Thirty six plus six is forty two. So now it's eight. Oh great! What did I do wrong? Eight times seven is fifty six. Three seventy six. Let's see again. Borrow. Becomes a three, becomes a ten, which will become a nine. Fifteen. Fifteen minus six is nine. Oh, here's my mistake. Nine minus seven is two. Bring down the six. Uh, two ninety six. It goes in six times. Six times six is forty two. Carry four. Six times four is twenty four. Carry eight. Two eighty two. Subtract one four. Bring that one down. And the only number that multiplied by seven that will give you a one at the end is three. So let's see if that works. Three times four is twenty-one. Carry two. Three times four is twelve. Plus two is now forty-one. There we go. Okay. Now, if you didn't want to do this, and you're like really uncomfortable with the division, another thing you could have done is take forty-seven and multiply it by. 814 or 823, 854 or 863. Your answer, your product after you multiply it, should have should give you 40,561. So whichever one of these four that multiplied by 417 gives you this is also the quotient. Okay, so you can think of it in different ways. How many factors in the expression have exactly two terms? How many factors? Okay, so what's a factor? 5 times 3 is 12. This is called the product. Factors are these, the numbers being multiplied. So 5 is a factor, 3 is also a factor. Okay, so going back to this, how many factors do we have? We have 1, 2, 3, 4. We have four things. This, so I'm going to replace this letter. So we got A times B times C times two. We got things, four terms, four factors multiplying. This eight multiplying by parentheses x plus four, which is multiplied by parentheses y plus four, which is multiplied by z squared plus four z plus seven. So there's four factors in this expression. Okay. Now, how many of these factors have two terms? Well, the eight is one term, so that doesn't count. X plus four, does this have two terms? Yes, one, two. That's one already. Y plus four, does that have two terms? One, two, that's two already. Z squared plus four Z plus seven. So does this expression have two terms? No, it has one, two, three. So the factors that have two terms are this and this. So how many of, which one is fact, or how many of these four factors have two terms? Well, this one and this one. So we have two. Okay, remember, terms are separated by either an addition sign or subtraction sign. Okay, that so it's x comma four, y comma four. If you want to think of it as um, like a list that you're making, and you're separating the items. Okay. Boop, boop, boop. The table shows the elevation above or below sea level of four locations. What does it mean that the elevation of Lincoln Forest is at zero? Well, if it's at zero. Okay, it means it's at ground level, sea level. I don't know if there's a lake under this, so this at zero, right? So if this is water, for example, and there's a mountain, okay, right here, if you were standing right there, 
you would be at ground level, sea level. Um, if you're up here, obviously, you're positive, and if you're down here, you're negative compared to the to zero. So, uh, what does it mean? The liquid force is a zero. The elevation of the liquid force does not change. No. Deer Lake is 1.3 from Lincoln Forest. No. Lincoln Forest is sea level. Oh, there you go. See? This Yocho. Car salesman's total earning E is based, is a base salary plus commission. So his total that he makes, total money that he brings home, is a base salary plus they give him a commission. So it's made up of two parts. The money he brings home is made of two parts. So he probably sells stuff. He's let's say he sells cars. Okay. So <clears throat> base salary of forty thousand and receives a commission of two hundred for every car C he sells. Which equation represents the total earnings for the sale? So he's guaranteed to make forty thousand dollars. Period. Per year. Okay. Plus he makes two hundred dollars for each car that he sells so times the number of cars that he sells so if he sold one car it'd be forty thousand plus two hundred times one he would bring down forty thousand two hundred dollars so it's a typical uh, way of paying anyone who uh, earns based on commission and salary okay so do we have an equation that looks like this forty thousand plus yeah we do here he makes a forty thousand plus Okay, which plus this every car he sells he gets two hundred dollars. So that's the correct answer. It's the only one that makes sense. Minus if you, this you know, this you could have ignored right away. This you could have ignored pretty much right away. I don't even know what two thousand one comes from. All right, so answer is C. Nineteen complete. Consider the number line below. Which statement best dis discover that? Ah compares negative one and a half and negative two and a half. So let's find out where negative one and a half is. It's right here. Negative two and a half is right here. Okay, so since negative two and a half and negative one and a half are both the same distance away from zero, they're not the same distance away from zero. Negative two and a half is further off to the left. So this is garbage. Since negative two and a half and negative one and a half are both one space away from two, Negative two and a half equals negative one and a half. Okay. First of all, yes, they're one. They're both one space away from negative two, but doesn't make them equal. No. Since two and a half is further from zero, ne uh, fr further from zero than negative one and a half. That's true. Negative two and a half is here, it's further away from zero on the left side. That means that negative two and a half is greater than negative one and a half. Not true because remember I told you the number on the right is always bigger. Right, so just even before we started, when we put these two points, we knew right away that this number right here, negative one and a half, is the bigger number. Anything that's on the right is bigger, always, if you're comparing two numbers. And then last one has to be true, since negative two and a half is on the left of negative one and a half, which it is, negative two and a half is less than negative one and a half. That makes more sense. Final answer. 20 product okay so the one thing with multiplication we don't really need to line up the decimals okay but we do need to multiply it correctly so I know that this has one decimal place this has two decimal place for a total of three decimals so my answer should have three decimal places so does everyone have three decimals say Ugh, yes they do okay so we have no choice but to actually multiply one times seven is seven five four at a placeholder here, 6 times 7 is 42, 4, 34, 24, 27. Okay, so 7, 7, 8, 7, 2. My answer should have three decimal places. So I'm going to have 1, 2, 3. I'm going to put the answer where you dot right there. And it looks like B is our choice. 21. Which expression is uh, equivalent to one half to a third power? Well, what's one half to a third power? Well, exponent here tells us that our base, which is one and a half, is multiplied by itself uh, three times, right? So it's one and a half times one and a half times one and a half. 
Multiplying fractions, we multiply the numerators. 1 times 1 times 1 is 1, and 2 times 2 is 4, times 2 is 8, so give us an answer of 1 eighth. And we want this one. I did too much work, actually. 22, which expression is equivalent to 27 and then 125? Well, 27, 125. So why am I writing that? I don't know. So let's take a look at the first one. 3 to the 5th to the 3rd power. Is that the same as 27 and 120 over 125? Well, this is 3 times 3 times 3, and at the bottom is 5 times 5 times 5, right? 3 fifths times 3 fifths times 3 fifths. 3 and 3 is 9, 9 is 3 is 27, 5 and 5 is 25, 25 times 5 is 125. So this is definitely equivalent. Second one, 3 and 5 cubed. For all the numerator, there's no exponent, so it's just 3. And 5 to the third power is 5 times 5 times 5, which is 125, and that's definitely not the same, so that's garbage. 3 fourths to the second power is 3 fourths times 3 fourths which is going to give us 9 over 16. That's also not true. And the last one we have 3, third, 3 to the third power, 5 to the fifth power. Jeez. 3 to the third power on top is 3 times 3 times 3. That's a 9. 5 to the fifth power is 5 times 5, which is 25. Times 5 is 125. Times 5 is 625. And 625 times 5, I have no idea. 3,125. That's definitely not the same. So the only one that's the same is this one. Remember, the difference between A and the other ones, or well, actually A and B and D, is that A has a parentheses and the exponent's outside. So the exponent is affecting everybody inside. So it's 3 to the third power and 5 to the third power. Whereas if you look at let, uh, letter B, you get 3 and 5 cubed here. There are no ex ex this exponent, this three exponent here is only affecting the five. It's not has nothing to do with a three on top. So I'll just be careful with that. Twenty-three. What are the coordinates of the point in the graph, really? So coordinates, there's only in one quadrant. So this is your x, so we are gonna look for the x. So to the right we go one, two, three, four, five. So the x coordinate is five. Y coordinate, we're going to go up, 1, 2, 3, and it's a 5 and 7. That one is easy. Too easy, actually. C. D. The number of vial. So, drove, okay. Miller's drove 150 miles in 3 hours. So, it looks like a rate problem. So, I'm going to write as a fraction. 150 miles in 3 hours. I write my units. How long will it take them to drive 400 miles? Well, if I put 400 here, 400 miles, and I want to write h hours, right? Can is a relationship side to side? Anything times 150 gives you 400. No. But what about up and down? You can always look up and down. 150 divided by what's three is divided by 50, right? So I can do the same thing here. Relationship is divide by 50. So 400 divided by 50 is 8. So it would take me 8 hours. And uh, I need to pause this because otherwise my battery is going to die. And I'm going to have to do this whole thing again. Continuing. And last question. Oops. Oop, there's more. 26. Okay. So family paid. One hundred now, which includes so the total one hundred forty-two eighty includes six eighty in taxes and play four tickets. So this paid for four tickets. Tickets. I can't. Can I write tickets? No, I can't. No, yes. Four tickets and six point eighty in taxes. So that's what one hundred forty-two eighty and eighty cents equals. So you paid four tickets and you paid some taxes. If you went, God, that's expensive. If you went somewhere with your friends or your parents, your brother and sister, and you bought four tickets, and then you also paid taxes, it would total up, total up to $142.80. So each ticket cost the same amount. How much did each person's ticket cost before the tax was added? Well, 
That's not that bad. So let's find out what it was without the taxes. So $142.80 minus, let's take away the taxes. If I subtract this, remember, line up your decimal, zero, zero, borrow, three, six. So before the taxes, just the tickets was $136. Now, you can easily find out how much your ticket was by dividing. Four goes 13, three times, 12. One, six comes down, four going 16, four times. So each ticket cost $34. Okay. So the, the main thing here is that you needed to subtract the taxes, okay, and then um, find out the price of the tickets before taxes, because that was the question. Well, that's what the question asked. Greta bought, what did she buy? 15, three 15 pound bags. So here's a 15 pound bag, here's another 15 pound bag, and here's another. 15 pound bag of dry dog food. Okay, so three of those, three bags. Notice that most questions I can, you know, you can sort of draw a diagram. It does help you out visualize this. And each, her dog eats 10 ounces of dry food every day. How many days will Greta need to buy? How many days? After how many days will Greta need to buy more dog food? Well, so this is 15 pounds, 15 pounds, 45, 15 pounds. So that's a total. 45 pounds of dog food, of food, right? And her, her dog eats in ounces, so that makes things a little bit more difficult. So one pound equals how many ounces of uh, dry ounces? It's 16 ounces. So we need to convert these 45 pounds into ounces. So if one pound is for 16 ounces, we're going to take 16, multiply that by 45, and we shall get 720 ounces. So 45 pounds of food is the same thing as 720 ounces. So if you have 720 ounces and your dog eats 10 ounces a day, 720 divided by 10 ounces a day, you know that you're going to get 72 days. So in 72 days, Miss Greta needs to go back and buy more dog food. This wasn't as bad, that bad, was it? Okay, so hopefully uh, you got to practice.